We're now going to demonstrate the creation of a simple process model in a process project using uh, one of the BPEL modeling tools. This one happens to be Oracle's JDeveloper BPEL Designer. But like we said before, most of the tools that we'll be dealing with that you'll be using use a lot of the same basic principles, the same basic concepts. Obviously the user interfaces will look a little bit different. Most of them are loosely uh, con constrained around the concept of Eclipse and how Eclipse works. Uh, and are mainly menu-driven, drag-and-drop types of processes. This one happens to be the one from Oracle. Like most of them, the first thing that we're going to need to do is create a project. So I'm going to come to the File menu and go down to New, and I want to choose the option to build a new project. So different kinds of projects can be created in these different types of development tools. What I want to create here is a BPEL process project. So it's going to lay out the structure and the various files are going to be uh, kind of coincide with the concept of building a process model and uh, creating a process project. So the, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to name my project. We're going to call this one Hello World to make it simple. I can also define a namespace here. So the namespace can be anything. If you're familiar with the way namespaces work uh, as far as names for, uh, uh, resolutions uh, in an XML document, similar concept here. I'm going to set this one to a path to tutorial.oracle.com. And the other thing we can choose here when we're building our initial project is we can choose a template type here. So if I click on this drop down box here, I basically can create a default process model right off the bat. And I can build one of three types here. So I can create an asynchronous variation, so I can create a process model that accepts uh, input but doesn't respond back. I can create a synchronous process that has an invocation, accepts data, and also sends a reply back. Or I can comp create a completely empty one where it's totally up to me as far as how I'm going to construct it and how I'm going to create it. We're going to go with the synchronous process here. So we're going to see both an input and an output being created. Click on OK. And it's going to go ahead and create our project for us. So here comes the initial project. So when, the, when, they, when they create the project, what pops up initially is going to be the process model. So remember when we asked it to create our project, it actually went out and created a, uh, a synchronous model here. So we can see that we've got a two activity tags inside of our process definition right now. We have a receive input and we have a reply output, creating a completely synchronous process here. We can also see that this particular tool uses three swim lanes. The center swim lane is simply going to be my process model itself, the flow of events. And then we have two partner links on the outermost swim lanes. Either one of these can be used for input or output. It really doesn't make any difference. Right now we have one partner link connection. That one partner link is going to be our client application that's going to be invoking us. And then we're going to be replying back to them. Now in addition to the creation of this process model, if I open up the project, I can see in the project they also have not only the BPEL model, but I also have a WSDL definition. So we've already talked about the fact that a process model can be described to everybody else as a with a WSDL document. So it basically has an interface to it. It has an input. It has an output, like everything else. But again, it, it, the usage of this is just to demonstrate the fact that a process model is just another kind of usable component that I can plug in through the assembler, and I can use a variety of different ways. The other thing that we have here beyond the diagram view is we also have a source view. So I'm going to click on the source tab, and the source tab is going to show me the XML code that's been created. So we know that the XML code is going to be something called a process definition, uh, and a process definition is going to be the XML description of the, um, the process model itself. And what's going to happen is this XML code, which is universally usable and acceptable by everybody, is going to be used by the integration server to actually create the deployment component pieces. So it's very interoperable. We can use it anywhere that we want. And right now what we have is a couple of different entries in here. Normally what you can get is an outline view. So the, the J developer in the lower left hand corner gives me what's called an outline view. So I can see all the various elements that are in my XML document. So I can see I have partner links. So we know we have one partner link. That partner link is our client, which is going to initiate us. We also have a variables link, which right now doesn't really have anything inside of it. Uh, we're going to be building off of this kind of as we go. But we've talked about the concept of variables and how we can create our own local variables to store information, to modify them, and manipulate them. So I've got two different perspectives here. I've got the source view and I've got the diagram view. They're both always going to be in sync. I make a change to one, it automatically updates the other one. So it'll always be synchronized. 
So normally what we try to do is we try to stick with the process diagram side of things and make our updates and make our changes here. And it makes it easier that way. So, so far we've created our process project. Our process project now has our BPEL, initial BPEL model, the source code associated with it, and the WSDL file.